uh, here we are today at uh, this beautiful monument here. You can't come to Botswana and go without visiting Definitely. this place. Definitely. Even if most of the tourist attraction for Botswana yeah. is when you're going to the northwest of this country. But this place, uh, most of the people when they come to Ngaburuoni, it's one of the places that uh, they want, they, they, they like to visit. Okay. Full of history when you come to this site. It's called a Three Dikosi Monument. Okay. S. Dikosi means chiefs. My brother. Nice to meet you, sir. Thank you very without much. Without wasting time, let yeah. me say this, sir. You are welcome Thank to you. our monument with the both of hands. Thank you. you help us to uncover the history of Botswana <laughs> all over. It was built in which year? 2004. 2004. Then 2005, a day before the independence. Mm. The third president of this country by that time, Dr. Festus Kuntibayi Mohai, then unveiled it for the public. Okay. And one thing you should know is that you see this place, if it be Ghana, I tell you, yes. when you come here, you're going to pay a lot of money. Yeah. But you come to Botswana, you walk yeah. in here, yeah. and you, you just learn without paying anything. Definitely. Yeah. Pula for the last time. Pula. Pula again. Pula. Okay, nice one. When you say pula, you say ain. Ain. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Join the journey by subscribing to our channel so that together we can spread love in the world. Like, comment, share this video. Let us dive in. So here we are today at this beautiful monument here. Uh, we call it the Dikosi, the three chiefs or kings yeah. of Botswana. Very, very uh, wonderful, full of history when you come to this site, full of history. So. Uh, we would love our brother here to take us through and show us around and, and, and it will help us to uncover the history of uh, Botswana, you know, captured right here at this place. So, my brother, good day. Nice to meet you, sir. Thank you very Without much. Without wasting time, let yeah. me say this, sir. You are welcome Thank to you. our monument with the both of hands. Thank you. Also, you are free to take photos. Yeah. Also, you are free to ask questions. All right. Like the monument, it's called a Three Dikosi Monument. Okay. S. Dikosi means chiefs. Like here in our monument, we're close to six pillars. Okay. The first three are on this side. Last three are on the other side. Then you've got the statues. Like myself, as I'm here, I am a Motswana from the ethnic group of Balete from Ramotswa. Here in our country, we've got 15 tribes. People of this country are called Botswana, the country Botswana, national language Setswana, the official language it's English, which is mostly used in our government services affairs. And this country of Botswana, its size roughly is the same as say, Kenya, France, and even as Texas in the US. Surface area for this country is a 581,730 square kilometers. And this country of Botswana, it's entirely landlocked, bordered by its neighbors, South Africa, Zimbabwe, Zambia, and Namibia. And this country of Botswana also is 84% covered by Kalahari Desert. And most of its population is settled in the east and the southeast of this country. Coming to the first pillar here, picture here just shows a warrior here holding X together with a spear. Name of the pillar, it's called Botabelo in Setswana. Can you say Botabelo, sir? Botabelo. Yeah, this Botabelo word, it's a Setswana word. It refers to a refuge. The years are 1820s to 1830s. So during those times, there were those wars called the for Difatani. That's the word Difatani here. It's a word used in the country called the for Lesotho. Or in English, you can use terms of troubles. These wars started downside in South Africa, where they were including a Zulu warrior called the for Shaka Zulu, and those were running from those other and part of India and Botswana when they arrived here. That's when they were given this refuge. That's why chiefs are for those times. Mm. And even at the moment, here in our country, we've got the refugee camp. When we're going towards the northwest of this country and we're going towards Kasani, there is a place called the for Dukwi. We've got close to 3,000 refugees. Some of them are from Somalia. Some of them are from Democratic Republic of Congo. Some of them are from Eritrea. And even the Angolans were here before, but the Angolans, they went back to their original country. It seems like those political issues, mm. since they've gone back to normal, then they've gone back to their country. Then from here, we can proceed to the second one on the other side. All right. Ba 
about the second one which is here picture just shows typical Motswana chief here seated on a chair during those times our chiefs they were using some traditional attire and also they seen some earrings as their trademarks there it was just to acknowledge our chiefs of those times and even about their braveness the plinth is called Bukhaka in Setswana as this Bukhaka refers to heroism so during those times 1830s to 1880s there are also those fights caused by the Ndebeles and Boers invaders the Ndebeles and Boers by that time mm. they wanted to rule or they wanted to grab this Botswana country because way back we Botswana we were ruled by the chiefs so already by the time the Ndebeles and Boers they were having those guns as our chiefs by the time there is some traditional medicine and witchcraft the black magic to strengthen themselves against, up against their enemies. So as the time goes on, there was a chief governor of a chief Sechele from the Bakwena tribe in Molepolole. Molepolole is going to go into the west of this country. It's about close to 50 kilometers to go to the place. Chief Sechele, he managed to use this kind of system, the battering system. He managed to give the white gentlemen from Britain some ostrich feathers together with the elephant ivories. Then they gave him some guns. And from those guns, he managed to defend the Ndebeles and Boers invaders. The Ndebeles, originally, they're from South Africa. They were the same clan with the Zulus. Up until they ran from the Zulus because of the wars of those times. So they ran to a country called of Zimbabwe at the moment. Before the country was called of Zimbabwe, it was called of the Matebele land. From the Matebele, it goes to Southern Rhodesia, up until comes Zimbabwe at the moment. The Boers, originally, they're from Europe whether from Europe, they're from the country, whether from Netherlands or Holland, up until they come and reside in South Africa in Cape Town. Now we are proceeding to the third one at the back. About the third one here, mm. picture here, just shows a man here, stressing a point like he's saying power to the people. people. Here it was time for scramble for Africa. Whereby by then, the European countries were dividing themselves against the African countries to colonize them or to protect them. By the time this Botswana country was not protected or colonized, the white men of Botswana country mm. as a desert. Well, this in this country as a trade route to pass by to countries where they think they'll find some minerals. At the end of the day, the plant is called Tsirelezo uh, in Setswana. As this Tsirelezo refers to protection, the years are 1880s to 1890s. By the time here, there was this man called the for Cecil John Rhodes. Cecil John Rhodes, he was a wealthy man, and with us over the time, he owns large shares in many things around Kimberley. And he also owns a little company called the British. South African company. Mm. By the time Cecil Rhodes, he was ruling the modern Zimbabwe and Zambia. And those two countries, way back, they were named after him. Zambia, Northern Rhodesia. Zimbabwe, Southern Rhodesia. Like the name itself, Rhodesia. Let us dismantle it. The surname for Cecil is Rhodes. When you add this I and A, it makes Rhodesia. The I, it stands for N. The A, it stands for Africa. Then goes like a road in Africa. So as the time goes on, Cecil Rhodes wanted to rule from Cape Town to Cairo, the whole continent of Africa, because of his railway line. And the people of those places against his ruling, because they have seen what they have done in Zimbabwe and Zambia. Because by the time Cecil Rhodes, he doesn't care about how people are living. He only cares about his wealthiness. As he failed that side, that's when he had to rule or to grab this Botswana country. Because by the time Cecil Rhodes, he wanted to combine Botswana with Zimbabwe. So it can be one country. That's when these three chiefs, they went to Britain to seek for the protection for this country. And they were given that protection in 1895 by the secretary, Mr. Joseph Chamberlain, together with the queen. The queen by that time, she was called uh, Queen Victoria. Way back because South Africa 
was more advanced than us. When these three chiefs went to Britain, there isn't this kind of mode of transport at the back there to go to South Africa. Mm. There in Cape Town, they claimed some ship to sail through to Britain. They took 23 days to arrive in Britain, almost a month. In Setswana, we are calling it Kotokoto. For it to be called Kotokoto, because it was pulled by the oxen, mm. when they were pulling it, they were making this kind of sound. Kot. Then it had been called Koto Koto in Setswana. Mm. Now we are moving to the three chiefs. Okay. So, these three chiefs, they are our nation's founders. Mm. And if it was, it was because of them, they were still going to the country called the Lord of Botswana. Those who were in the north they were going to be the Zimbabweans, South South Africans. We ended up being the Botswanas because of these three chiefs. At the end of the day, this place was just built just under these three chiefs. Mm. And it's not like they were tall like this. Mm. This tallness is just to show where they are far away to find where this place is. The attire, the way they are, mm. they were the same like this the moment they went to Britain, they were empowered by the missionaries. Okay. The material which was used to make these three statues, it's a bronze. Mm. And even the way they appear in their faces, they look the same like in our historic St. Botswana. Mm. Here in our country, our currency, it's called Ula. Mm. These three chiefs are the ones who are appearing in our 100 Canadian Botswana. And even the way they stand, they were talking. When they arrived in Britain, first one had to talk to the queen, it was Kama the third. Like he stands, he was saying to the queen, Queen, they wanted to take our land. Then the one is in the middle, he's called Sibeli the first. Like he put his hand like this, he was saying to the queen, as small as it is, meaning the land. Then the last one who is holding the knob carry, he's called between the first. And he was just doing the knob carry, insisting or stressing, saying to the queen, yes indeed, it is true, they wanted to take our land. First one is called Kama the third or Kama the great. Grandfather to our first president, Sir Kama. Great grandfather to the previous president, Sereta Kama Yan Kama. As Sereta Kama Yan Kama is the son to our first president, Sereta Kama. That from Serue, Serue is going to, go to the center of this country. Second one in the middle is called Sibeli the first. Son of Sibeli the first, he's from a queen tribe in Mulepolole. Mulepolole is going to, go to the west of this country. Then the last one is called Between the first. Son of Hasitu the first, he saw like it's a tribe in Kanye. Kanye is going to, go to the south of this country where our second president originates, who was buried in 2017, around July, Seiki Dumila Masiri. Well, like this, Kama the third is the eldest one, followed by Sibili. Then the youngest one is called Batwing. Then it also goes vice versa according to who died first. The youngest one, Batwing, died first, followed by Sibili. Then the eldest one, Kama the third, died last. Here, it just shows our national emblem or our coat of arms. The two zebras, mm. they represent our tourism in Botswana. Elephant ivory, cog wheels for mining at the top, they represent our industry in Botswana. Cow, sorghum, they represent our agriculture in Botswana. The word pula represents our currency. The word pula, it's a Setswana word, it refers to rain. rain. Also the word pula, it is our slogan, our country which is mostly used by our political leaders in Botswana. Before they can start some meetings no. or sessions, they shout the word Pula. Mm. Those who are terrified after them shout in the same slogan, by same Pula. Aye. Can you say Pula? Pula. Again. Pula. Okay, that's Pula. nice. Then about Aye. our flag, our flag is that side. We'll find it on the outside. First yeah. color and the flag is the blue color, mm. which represents in the sky. Second one, white one, which is going to all tribes are equal. Third one, black one, which is representing we as Botswana. Then there's another white one, so going to the still peace. Last one is the blue one, which is representing water. I think uh, that is all of our, our flag. Then from here, we are moving forward to the last three players on the other side. Yeah. About the fourth one, picture that side just shows a Botswana woman there mm. putting the basket on top of her head. Hair baby on hair big. There, it was when times were tough. When we men were left behind to look after their kids, while gentlemen went to the South African mines to work for their families and even for the tax. As you can see here, it's a woman here. It also tells how women played a part in the nation build of this country. Mm. The print is called Bui Toko in Setswana. As this Bui Toko refers to endurance, the years are 1900s to 1930s. By the time here, this country was called out of Botswana land. It had been Botswana. 
Lesotho was covered of Basotho land. It will be Lesotho. Swaziland was covered of Swaziland, and Swaziland now, which is now called Eswatini. By the time here, there was a Scottish gentleman called of Robert Moffat. Robert Moffat ended up writing the Bible for Setswana. Instead of saying Botswana land, he ended up saying Botswana land because he was a white gentleman, so the pronunciation here. And by the time your children was poor, times were tough, but communities built schools and them. So the gentleman was the principal interpreter or the advisor for these three chiefs, Mr. William Charles Willoughby, ended up building a school in South Africa near Freiburg. The school was called for Tiger Kloof whereby many Botswana attended that school, including our first president, Sister Zakama, second president, Sekitu Mila Masire, former minister of education, Dr. Hausidi Chiebe. She's still alive. Last year, on the 20th of October, she was celebrating 101. And even the composer of our national anthem, Kaleman Tumeri Somatete, and other Botswanas attended that school. The school managed to be closed because of that type of thing in South Africa by that time. Those who understand this can be cool. When they arrive here, that's when they managed to build some schools and dams. Right now, three of them are still existing. We've got the one in Mule Polole, which is called the Bakwena National School. Second one is in Tlokweng, which is called the Tlokwa National School. While the third one, it was in Muchudi. The one in Muchudi has been transformed to be the museum. The museum is just on top of the hill in Muchudi, it's called the for Putadi Gogo. One of the dam, from the dams, which they have built, which is still existing, We've got the one called of Makoduma Dam in Kanyi. That is after this Makoduma Dam, there was this introduction of water standard pipes. The introduction of water standard pipes started downside in Kanyi up until it goes to the place of this Republic of uh, Botswana. Then from here, we are proceeding to the fifth one on the other side. Coming to the fifth one here, picture just shows a soldier here in action. Here, it was time for the Second World War. As the first one, it started in 1914 till 1918. Second one, 1939 till 1945. 10,000 of Botswana men went to the Second World War fight. They just were just to support the British because the British ended up supporting us up until we were given that protection that we were talking about from that third plinth. When they went there, they went as far as North Africa, Middle East, and Europe. When they went there, they don't know nothing about guns. They just managed to do some logistic works like building some roads, cooking for the British, and even doing some first aid job. Unfortunately, here 210 of Botswana men perished that side. Some of them were being killed by the guns, some of them were being affected by lungs like TB. As you know, in guns, they seen some chemicals or powders. That's when you know those powders or chemicals, that's when they affected by lungs like TB. Those who are left, they managed to come back home. When they arrive here, that's when they're called our veterans. At the moment, 27th of them are still alive. And those who are still alive every month end, they're just being given some allowance by the government so they can sustain their lives. Those who pass away, their spouses are the ones who are benefiting from those allowances from the government. Then from here, we are moving forward to the last one at the bay. <coughs> About the fourth one, picture just shows a uh, a young and uh, sophisticated lady here holding the national flag of this Republic of Botswana. The plant is called a Buipuso in Botswana, as this Buipuso refers to independence. independence. Every year on the 30th of September, we, Botswana, we are celebrating independence. Last year, we are celebrating our 57th anniversary. 2016, it was our Golden Jubilee, as it was a big celebration of our country. 1965, first elections of Botswana were held. Current ruling party BDP won those elections. Sister Takam became the first Prime Minister of this country. 66, that's when we were trying to achieve our celebrate our first independence. Maybe I can say we are lucky. Or maybe I can say God is great. Because maybe it's a time for Cecil John Rose. Maybe the diamonds that we were trying are benefiting from them at the moment, maybe we'll never benefit from them. That is why I'm saying so. That's why we're getting independence. While we are on our own, following year 1967. That is when the diamonds were discovered in Botswana, in Orapa. Then the process of nation building and development up until today. Only developers in Botswana around the 50s. It was only just a five kilometer tar road from the railway line going to the high court in Lobaze by then. The high court that I'm talking about, Sabi located to Haburuni, is the one which is near to other side. Our first capital city, it was called Mafiking or Mahiking in South Africa. Like in South Africa, they've seen some provinces. While in our country, they've seen some districts. This ninth one, which is Kroboda of Northwest Province, which includes Mafiking, 
it was part of Botswana. Because of that apartheid in Samoa at that time, that is when they end up taking that part of Northwest. The tribes in our country, you'll mostly find them in the Northwest province, and that's why we Botswana have got some relatives outside in South Africa. After Mafikeng, Lobati became our second capital city. Lobati is about 67 kilometers from Khaburun, while going down south. That town of Lobati also got much history. Late former president of South Africa, Nelson Mandela, he was given a political asylum in that town of Fulbati by family of fish eating. Together with the late former president of Mozambique, Samara Machel, he was also being given a political asylum in that town of Fulbati by family of Kabu Isil. And then after Fulbati, Khaburuni became our permanent capital city. The area which we are in right now, it's our new central business district, our new CBD. Way back we, Botswana, we are using the flag for Britain. Cousin to Queen Elizabeth came here to come and build the one we're using right now. She was called of Princess Marina. Even here in Khaburoni, we've got the hospital called of Princess Marina. It was named after her. The moment he pulled another flock for Britain down, pulling the one for Botswana up, the rain poured that day. That is why our currency is called a Pula, and even a slogan is called a Pula. There is no water, there's no life. When there's no water, you can't survive because water is life. life. I think that this is the end of our chapter. I think from the starting point till the end. I think now we get an idea about the history of Botswana. I think on top of it, also yourself, I think if you're going back home, you also invite others to come and visit this beautiful country of Botswana. So what is happening here? This place is open for everybody. Whether you are in Botswana, whether you are outside this country, you are still allowed to come and visit. Have the information like we do right now. You can still visit, come and get us some photos. Okay. Visit, come and... Uh, uh, even, even, even if you're getting bored at home, like during the family, you can still come with the food, you can come like snatches here. You know, if you are having the wedding, you can come take it from wedding photos here. Like this place is open like every day, Monday to Sunday, even during the holidays. It's open for the public. Up to so there's no... From morning to... It's a half past seven to six o'clock. Uh, yeah, so I think uh, that's all I have for you. Now we are done. Yeah. Pula for the last time. Pula. Pula again. Pula. Okay, nice one. Sir. Why you say pula, you say ain. Ain. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome. Sir. I think uh, it's been a, a yeah. wonderful moment uh, taking us through uh, this place. As I said from the beginning, uh, those of you watching us, I told you that this place is, you know, packed with the history. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. he has helped us to unpack. Definitely. the history behind and there's a whole Botswana here you definitely, know definitely, and definitely, uh, definitely. yeah so uh, if I may ask a question yeah this place um, it was built which year 2004 2004 then 2005 a day before the independence mm. the third president of this country by that time Dr. Festus Huntebaye Mare then unveiled it for the public okay yes sir then then the CBD was unveiled in 2016 a, a, a week before the independence mm. Yeah. And uh, I, I, I was told that it was built by some, is it Korean? Korean, Korean definitely, Korean definitely. Okay. It is, definitely. They built definitely this one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. So thank you for taking us through. This is a, a whole, uh, it's supposed to be a whole semester course. Yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely. You, you try to package it uh, yeah. very nicely. That's very wonderful. And uh, yeah. we, we advise you, if you come to Botswana, you yeah. can't come to Botswana and go without visiting definitely, this place. Definitely, definitely. Because this definitely. is a, a whole... Even if most of the tourist mm. attraction for Botswana yeah. is when you're going to the northwest of this country. Mm. But this place, uh, most of the people, when they come to Ngaburuoni, it's one of the places that uh, they want, they, they, they like to visit. Yeah. yeah. for me, because yeah. uh, being here for almost six years, yeah. and I'll be going to Ghana, yeah. um, when I go, they ask me about Botswana. Yeah, you know, have what is to it? Say. Uh, yeah. I have something to say because Definitely. once you stay in Botswana for yeah. almost six years, you become ambassador and of Botswana. The moment, uh, like we are saying, <laughs> they saw this. Yeah. Some of them they want to come exactly. alive, right? And uh, exactly. uh, looking at the at the videos. Exactly. Yeah, to come experience and see exactly. what is happening here. Exactly. Extra, 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 to explore. Yeah. Yeah. As uh, you know, that Botswana is a welcoming nation. Yeah. When I'm here, I can say you can have a peace of mind. And again, let me say that uh, maybe want to come and uh, do business in Botswana, I can say to all the Ghanaians that they come to Botswana, Botswana is a safe country. When we're here, we are in a safe country. Yeah, I think that's one thing we share in common. Definitely. Ghana definitely. is a peaceful country. Definitely. Botswana is a peaceful definitely. country. In terms of, um, uh, what do you call it, democracy? Yeah, yeah. We are up there in Botswana. Yeah. It's the same. We are yeah. peaceful. They are peaceful. This year you are going to the polls. We are also going to the polls this same year. Same year. Yeah, yeah, one thing. <laughs> exactly. I do tell some people that uh, we can yeah. differ with colors or whatever, mm. one, two, three. But yeah. every day we're one thing. Exactly. Yeah. So you don't have to fight each other. Everybody have to come, come together. together. 
like the country Botswana still prevailing with peace. Yeah. Rather than fighting, we believe in dialogue. We believe in word of mouth. Is in Swaziland we are saying ntakolo, mm. So that's why mostly the country still prevailing with peace. Yeah, because we can have differences. Let me say even at the, at the homes. Mm. Uh, or, or as relatives, okay. If I let's say we are having the gathering, let's say yeah. it's a wedding, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a death, or whatever. We sometimes put the differences aside. Then we have to work. Yeah, jo -jo. definitely <laughs> yeah. for what we have to be done exactly. by that time. Yeah, exactly. so that's why we are doing the things here. Exactly. Yeah. No, and, and your name once again, uh, to Timothy. Mr. Timothy. Timothy for the Bible. Oh, okay. But uh, like uh, the Setswana name, it's Untu Sitte Oja. Okay. Yeah. Untu Sitte Oja. Yeah. yeah. Untu Sitte yeah. means someone who helped you. Yeah. Yeah. Like right now, I was doing yes. it. I uh, see, you know, someone. Yeah. It's like two so. Yeah. Two so. Yeah. yeah. It's help. Yeah. yeah. It's one thing. Yeah. 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 Oh, nice meeting yeah. you. Nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you very much. I think yeah. uh, I've really enjoyed the the history yeah. of Botswana. Yeah. I, I I do have a big uh, history about Botswana, but sometimes yeah. uh, when you are reading, I, I don't like reading. I love listening to <laughs> history. So when I uh, uh, like like I, I was saying yeah. that um. Even personally, having your own channel, it could be a focus, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like you invite, yeah. and then you educate us. And some of us who are lazy, we don't yeah. like reading. <laughs> we can just at workout, you know? Just like like we are saying, to, uh, like saying, a lot of to, people, they yeah. don't like uh, reading. Yeah, yeah, I love, I I love audio yeah. books. Yeah. I love audio books. Yeah. When I'm about to sleep, I love listening to, to, to that, you know? Yeah. And I get it quickly than yeah. spending time reading. Definitely. Because uh, my eyes sometimes. Yeah. So like we are saying, I'm going to work on it. Yeah, yeah. The podcast, so that I'm we can yeah. we can just go there. If I you are telling you say ah, when I'm in Ghana, I say okay. So what, what is the history of? A, uh, yeah. No, no, go to his podcast. Yeah, just, he has, just check. <laughs> he has <laughs> treasure there. <laughs> just go and update yourself. You know. So thank you, thank you very much. You're welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you again. Thank you very welcome. much. Yeah. <laughs> and one thing you should know is that you see this place. If we're in Ghana, I tell you, yeah. when you come here, you're gonna pay a lot of money. Yeah. But you come to Botswana, you walk yeah. in here, yeah. and you you just learn without paying anything. Definitely. <laughs>